goes. There it goes. What? Nothing, just trying to figure out this new um, thing. Let me make sure it's live on Norvice on our phone and not just on. It's on Norvice on here, but there's nobody on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah the Facebook decided to move everything around on us again. I don't know why all of a sudden over here it won't it won't show me the how many people are live. It it says live. It's got the little red square, but it won't it won't and it hasn't for like the past several Maybe it needs updating. several times. We got twenty five. All right. Sean Maynard, Justin Bubble, Britt, and Doug Lindsay. Britt, I thought they were somewhere where they didn't have a. Um, a, um, I didn't think they had a signal. Are you seeing the comments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing comments. CJ Morgan. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now I can see that. I just can't. It, it's not showing me, like it says live, but it doesn't say how many people are live. Right. Which is, which is weird. Um, did you check the the closed camera? I did. We can check again. Okay. You're all discombobulated over there. Well, it doesn't look like I hear 10 minutes before. I wasn't going to say anything. I See, this is the new me. I'm, I'm not exploding. It was fishing related, so no. it's okay. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yeah, now you got people commenting and giving you updates. So you can see how many people. Oh, okay. Are. What's up, guys? Can everybody see and hear me okay? Switch it back to the to the big camera. Yeah, we were we were a little late getting on at um, Facebook. <laughs> we are home. Couldn't miss your smiling face. That's funny. From Louisiana. One thing I just realized when What's I set that? up those scenes with the pictures, I did not make a microphone, and I can't do it without going to the scene right now. So we're just going to flip through them real quick because they're not going to be able to hear anything from us. All right, that's fine. All right, loud and clear, loud and clear, good. We'll give it a few more minutes. Like I said, we uh, we got on late tonight. I've I've got um, I've got one pattern prepped, but it's it's a big one. So um, we're only going to be tying one fly tonight, but it's um, it's like a like a braiding fly. So it's it's going to take a while. It's a braiding fly. Yeah, it's so cool, cool fly. No, I'm not tying a nymph. No. No, we do got to get to some small flies though. It's been a lot of streamers. That's eh, true. Melbourne, Australia. Sound and picture. Okay, sound and picture. Good. All right, cool. Hey, D, what's up? Yeah, we were just. I, I've got a call with uh, with uh, Bobby and uh, Shannon and Dale about um, uh, what we're going to do this year as far as Norvice in the shop. So. Hopefully we'll have some answers here before long. CJ Morgan snot rocket. Yeah, we're tying O'Neill snot rocket today. So we'll tie one of those babies right there. Super, super cool pattern. Forty three. Seven oh eight Yeah, we're not gonna pull a bunch of people today. It's um summertime is tough. Any thoughts about the next Any we're gonna talk about that and um some other things and just decide what uh what what we're gonna do down at um at Tux Fly Shop this year. Um we're going to do something we we just don't know what it is yet, but we we've got to get started planning it because it's you know June and before you know it you're going to blink your eye and October's going to be here. So we will uh, we'll definitely be down in uh, in North Carolina at, at least a couple of times this year. We're just not sure when. 
So, all right, let's uh, let's get started. So, we this time last week, I guess we were off the water by now, but um, we were we we take a, a trip every. Uh, Any news from the tube about new products? Yeah, there's there's always new products that, that we're working on. We've got several several new things that uh, that we're going to unveil at um, what's it called? Uh, I IFTD. IFTD in October. So, uh, so anyhow, um, we were on our Sean Andrew rakes. This flies money for predators. Yeah, it is. Um, we were on our our annual Northern Pike trip last week and um we, we we take a trip over memorial day we've done it the last three years um we had a great great uh trip it, it was it was a lot of fun we had a lot of laughs fishing was tough this year um the, they got some weather the day before we came out uh the river the first day we fished was high and it was it was off color not not totally bad, not totally blown out and fishable, but it just made for some tough conditions. Um, boated a couple of fish on Saturday, um, did a little better on Sunday, but it was it was just a, a, a tough weekend. And you know things happen. We went out there the last two years and we and we crushed them. So um, actually we've got some picture keyed up. We're we're fishing um, we're fishing for big northern pike in small rivers and and when i'm when i'm saying small rivers it, you can put the boat in the middle of the river and if you have a competent caster you can cast to either side um so we're talking rivers that are you know anywhere from 100 to maybe 150 feet wide so not not very big but we have you know been fortunate enough to land some some really really nice fish braden stuck a good one um that he got to the boat and then he unfortunately lost what they are saying would have been the biggest pike landed on this guide program and and the guide estimated it to be in the neighborhood of about 42 inches and they got it up to the side of the boat and it started to alligator roll and the hook just popped off and it was um we, we were in front of him and we heard him start hooping and hollering and we turned away we were probably 50 maybe 75 yards ahead of him and we turned around and looked, and, and all I saw, his rod was doubled over, and he he was just giving this fish the business, just stripping it, strip setting as hard as he could. And um, like I said, he got it up to the boat, and I, I saw um, Stephen go for the net, so that's how close they were, and then it just started rolling and came unbuttoned. So, um, Watch the rod do that to that. Yeah, yeah, it, it did. This doubled over to straight up, and then he just kind of went, oh, and held his hands and sat down in the seat, so... It was it was good, but um, go ahead and flash some of the pictures up. The, these are the type of fish that we're um, that we're looking for. So yeah, those are those are four of the um, of the fish. That those fish range anywhere from about. 33 to Tyler the the big one that Tyler's holding is is right at about 40 inches so the these are these are serious serious fish that we're that we're dealing with and they're super super fun to fish with Brayden but had a chance to beat me just yeah well I, I I'm not going to bust him on that too I mean that's that's heartbreaker to lose a fish like that um the it's big one the big one that I'm holding with the guide, that one's about 38 and a half, 39 inches. It was, it was extremely fat, um, just a, a pig of a fish. So um, good, good, good stuff. So this pattern, we've, uh, we've kind of developed it. Again, similar to the pattern that we tied last time when we were on, it was designed for a specific reason in a specific scenario. Um, if you have to boom 60 and 70 foot casts, this is not the pattern for you or for that application it it casts like a wet sock um but if if you're on a nine or a ten weight and you're throwing a comfortable 50 60 feet um it's it's a great great fly so it's o'neill's snot rocket so this one they, they come in at about uh six and a half to seven inches long total so this is a color that we call electric chicken which is um uh, chartreuse and um, P 
pink, which is a, a, a great color. It, it's funny, the, the last handful of years, we, we were fishing muted colors like tans and, and off-whites and, and so forth. And this year, we were fishing some crazy color. I was fishing one that we call cotton candy, which is blue and pink. Um, my buddy Ed was fishing one that was orange and pink, which was super cool. Um, so tonight, we're going to do one out of orange and pink for a couple of reasons. Um, it looked way cool in the water. And I want you to, I, I wanted to tie it out of two very contrasting colors of marabou so that you can see how they all blend together. Okay, so that's, that's O'Neill's snot rocket. Tell them Rob we were throwing it with last weekend. We, are we allowed to? We are. They unveiled it last Monday. Oh, okay. So we were, um, I, I didn't know we could say anything. Yeah, so we're allowed to talk about it now. All right, we were sworn to secrecy for a couple of weeks. Yeah, we couldn't post any pictures or anything, but we were fishing with TFO has a brand new rod out. Um, it's the the uh, the Blaine Chocolate. It's called the BF rod, which stands for Big Fly. Um, it's a the the Esox rod is going out of the line. The Big Fly rod is coming in. Um, again, it's it's designed for throwing big flies, for throwing musky and 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 pike type flies. Um, we had a couple of rods. We had an eight weight and we had a ten weight. And they also make a twelve. And they make a twelve. Um, I threw the ten weight. I think all day. You the had the, the one day. And the ten Sunday. Okay. Because I had the ten. Okay. I, mean, I had the ten Saturday. And and I threw I I threw it all day and this was this was with the intermediate line on it, and to be honest with you. I threw the eight weight the first day, and I mean, when you're pike fishing, it's a lot of casting. It's, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of casting. And my arm was sore, my elbow was sore at the end of the day. The second day, same flies, and I, th I threw the 10 weight. Didn't really notice a big difference in the, in the physical weight of the rod, um, and I cast it all day, and at the end of the day, my arm felt great. So um, we're, we're really excited about these new rods coming we'll out from TFL. We'll weights as soon as they're available for us to get and keep two 10 weights. Yeah, for sure. So, this is... Uh, they're one-handed rods with an extended butt on them, so you can do it two-handed, or you can use the butt for more leverage and figure eight. And then we had a question, can you use GSP on the Norvice bobbin? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yep. Yep. So, this is the, the one that I'm going to tie now. This is the original um, platform, and I've been tying these for about, I don't know, about four years now. And they started... Um, we call them snot rockets because I designed this pattern originally to fish in the ponds in, in Lower Delaware for chain pickerel. Delaware's so big, you gotta say lower. Lower Delaware, yeah, yeah right, right. It's, it's a whole hour and 20 yeah. minutes to get to it, the yeah. furthest one. So, um, and they were originally two sections. This is a three section, um, so it's three sections, two joints, and um, we started fishing these for the pike, and um, they're, they're just, they're an awesome fly. So let's um, let's get started. So what I've got in here now, it's a Mustad 34011 in a 1-aught. This hook does not matter because we're going to cut it off. Um, you could use a shank back here if you wanted to. Um, you, could, you, you could use, I use hooks, especially Mustad hooks, because they're cheap. And shanks are getting popular and they're getting expensive. And so, it's hard to find. and Simon was out of a lot of stuff on their website for a while. Yeah, they were. So you can get a bunch of uh, of of these shanks or these hooks rather, and then we're just going to tie on it like a regular fly, and then we're going to uh, we're going to cut it in half, or we're going to cut the point off. So this is come out of there. This is the platform that this thing's going to be tied on. So there, what, what I'm holding back here, that's the hook. And then we've got a 2 aught B10S in the middle, and that's done by design. And then we have a heavy-duty, um, I believe it's an inch and 5 eighths uh, Flyman musky shank in the front. Okay, so this is what's underneath all of that marabou. So we're going to start, and we're just going to, we're going to build collars of marabou of different... Um, thickness or different bulk as we move up the um, the shank of the hook. So the first one, we're not going to use a support ball because we, we use different size of dubbing balls to support this to get the flare and get the taper that we want. So the first one is the tail. We're not going to use um, any dubbing ball at all. So I've got some 
Uh, this is oh Nature Spirit Fish Hunter Spay Marabou. This is great, great, great Marabou. And I'm going to pick one pink and one yellow. There's good yellow. Okay, so we're going to prep this. So all of this basically from here down is garbage. So we're just going to strip that off. Okay, now you want to pull from about the same portion of the feather because you want you want this length to be about the same all the way through. Okay, so you don't want to you don't want to pull from from up here and use that and then use this longer stuff down here. So you want to try to use the longer stuff if you can. So on the first section we're going to use about a quarter inch of material and when I say quarter inch I'm talking about the the physical length of the material on the shank of the hook so this length right here is about a quarter inch or so maybe a little bit less than that this is very important because you don't you don't want to you you want to build your collars with successively more bulk as you move your way up the pattern so we're going to do this is going to have five collars on it and we're going to do a quarter inch a half inch three quarters one inch and an inch and a quarter so each time we do a collar there's going to be more physically more material on the shank of the hook and when I'm picking a feather this is what I want I want feathers that have nice long um, barbules coming off the, the center stem I, I want to pick a section of center stem that's not too too thick because we're going to palmer this around the um, the shank of the hook and I want to draw from about the same section so if this is the tip here I want to be down in here about I don't know maybe two inches or so this is where the good material is and this is this is what I want to draw from and I want to do that for each um, collar that I'm that I'm I'm wrapping and that's about the right amount of material No, I don't. I used to. Marabou's two dollars for a gigantic pack, and I honestly, it goes right here in my waste bin, and I throw it out. Should I keep it? Yeah, I probably should, but I don't. Buzzy texted me and said he must have gotten old because he's not tied at warp speed. <laughs> Who me? Yeah. I don't tie at warp speed. It's Marabou. It takes a little while. Yeah, I gotta prep it. All right, so there's our pink. There's our yellow, and what we're going to do, we're going to lay them right together. Okay, and I'm going to stroke these back, and we're going to tie them in by the tip. So I, I selected the material that I wanted, I folded the tips forward, and I cut them. Okay, and now I'm back here at the what's what's going to be the the bend of the hook or for this particular hook it's right above the point and I'm going to tie these in by the tip now when you tie them in you want to leave yourself get this tied in and I'll show you you want to leave yourself a little bit of room for when you start wrapping you don't want to start wrapping right up against the material leave yourself just a little bit of room to get this started and it'll make it a lot easier for you all right, so I've got that tied in. Throw a half hitch in it. Go on my cradle. Now I'm going to grab both stems with my with my hackle pliers. Make sure that I don't get any of the I don't want any of the feather in there. I'm going to grab both stems at the same time, and I'm going to clip this off. Okay. And now we're just going to stroke these back and I'm going to put one turn in. And then each time I'm going to kind of 
you don't want to you're, you're wrapping forward but you're, you're not wrapping over top you're wrapping right next to your previous wrap and if you have to you want to stroke this back you don't want to trap any of these any of these fibers when you're wrapping and typically on this first collar it's going to be about three wraps the biggest problem that people have with this pattern and I've taught this pattern in classes several times they they put too much bulk in the back collars of this and it and because they're looking at it and if you look there's not there's not a whole lot here right now and the people start looking at it and they're like oh my god this isn't enough material trust me if you follow this three quarter half inch you know that, that I'm telling you you will have plenty of material on this fly by the time you're done okay so now I've got all this material back I'm going to pinch these um, uh, feather stems to the uh, to the hook shank and I'm going to come in with my bobbin I'm using this is white Vivas 6 aught ultra thread the thread color really doesn't matter because when you're done you're not going to see it anyway and I'm going to do three behind three in front three behind I do that twice and three in front now I've got it I can come in here and I can clip these stems off okay now we're going to take a brush and I'm just going to brush this back and all that does is if I have anything trapped under there it just gets it out from underneath of itself and now what I want to do I want to pull these back and these are all the the marabou fibers that come off of the stem the stem is right there and there's three wraps of stem right under that bodkin okay so what I want to do I want to come back and I want to wrap right over top of those those stems and I want to get that all three of those stems covered with um, with thread now this is this is a fly for toothy critters so every collar just going to put a dab crazy glue on there or zap a gap or whatever you have and this is where marabou gets a bad rap for not being durable and if you tie it in this way believe it or not it is extremely durable and I've had these that have caught like I don't know 50 75 uh, chain pickerel so it's it's durable because this stuff is so light and wispy but you can see how you get that collar blend and how you get the yellow and the um, and the pink in there and that that's going to be you're going to see that continue as we go through the pattern okay so now on each collar we're going to put just a little bit of flash and this is this is Enrico um, it's sparkle sparkle brush and it's pearl magic I believe is what he calls it now remember this is one collar of five okay so don't go crazy on this every collar when we put the flash in we're going to do three turns that's it three turns of flash half hitch it okay and then we're going to tease this back and we're going to go one don't worry about it that it gets matted up and all we're going to fix that later two and three Okay, and then you want to come in here and you want to kind of separate what's staying on the fly and what's staying on the brush. And we'll come back. I'll kind of fish that through. And the reason I like putting this brush on over top, it's a wire core brush. So it also helps in protecting those. Um, those marabou stems so being it's wire core I'm going to use these little side cutters and I'm going to come in there and just cut that off 
Now you've got that little sharp bit of wire. You want to push that down with your finger because that will cut a thread like nobody's business. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with my bodkin and I'm going to take this flash and I'm just going to pull it out so that it's not matted up anymore. And we're going to brush it back with our brush. And there you go. There's collar number one. You've got a little bit of marabou. And you've got that flash veiled over top of it. Okay, now, this is very important, and it took me a while to figure this out. If you look at this one, this has, it's got a very nice full body to it and you don't really see any gaps to it. It, it. It's got nice consistent flow from the tail all the way up to the head. If you look at one of my earlier ones, this one does not. You gotta hold it lower. There you go. go in front. Can you see it there? Yeah. Yeah, this one does not. Okay, so you can see right here there's a dead spot. You can see right up here there's a dead spot. Will it fish? Yes, it will absolutely fish. Will it catch fish? Yes, it will absolutely catch fish. Does not look very nice in the box or sitting out in front of the table um, at a show. So that one versus, versus this one here, you can see the difference. Okay, the way that you get that nice flow without the, the dead spots, what most people do when their time flies like this, they will tie one fly at the back of the hook or one collar at the back of the hook and then they'll tie another collar up here at the front then they'll do their joint then they'll tie at the back and at the front and what you get is you get a heavy collar right here at the joint because you have two you got a collar on this one and then you got a collar on your next one and then you get dead space and then you get another you know double collar at the end in the beginning of the next connection so what you want to do Think of, where did my chassis go? Okay, here it is. Think of this. Think of this here as one solid piece. Forget about the joints. Okay, don't, don't worry about the joints, where the joints are. And you want to tie a collar every three quarters of an inch. Okay, so we're going to tie one here. Then we're going to come up three quarters of an inch which if you, your, your joint in your finger is one inch, so you want to go two-thirds of that, or three-quarters of that. So we're, our next collar is going to wind up being about right here. Then our next collar is going to be three-sixteenths of an inch from that, which will encompass or go over top of the joint, but don't worry about the joint. Just treat this as one solid piece, one, one long piece, and just mark it off every three-quarters of an inch, and that's where you tie a collar. Okay, so... We're going to go about right there. So I'm going to advance my thread up right here. That's where we're going to tie the collar. I'm going to throw a half hitch in. And that's kind of my mark right there. That's, that's where I'm going, to, I'm going to put a dubbing ball here. And then we're going to wrap our collar right there. So i got a half hitch in. And for the dubbing, we're going to use pearl ice dub. Okay. And all this does is... It creates a ball behind the marabou so that you get a different level of flare. And as we go forward, the, the dubbing ball or the support underneath the marabou is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So this one, this is our second collar, doesn't need to be too big. I'm just going to pull a little bit of ice dub out here. I want to spin the vise. Touch the dubbing to the thread, it jumps out of my fingers right up onto the thread. There you go. We'll tighten that up a little bit. And I will come off my cradle, come right back here, and we're not working this up and down the shank of the hook. I'm wrapping it right on top of itself. And there you go. And that's going to be our support. And that's another thing that's nice about this working with this marabou 
the marabou is so light you don't need a ton of support underneath it like you don't th there's a lot of blaine chocolate in this pattern but you don't need the spreader cones or you don't need any of the stuff that, that he's using when he's trying to flare bucktail this would not work for bucktail because the bucktail is is too rigid and it would collapse with the marabou it works fantastic okay so now we're going to repeat steps uh one through four and I'm going to pick a nice marabou feather. Take your time when doing this. I should have pre-sorted these feathers, but uh, we were running a little behind today. We got a, a question. I guess Daniel Oakland came in late. What do you fish? What fish do you fish that? This? Yeah, what fly do you use? What, okay, this was designed. It was originally designed for chain pickerel, which we have a ton of in our ponds in the uh, in the lower part of the state. And this, that was a double, so it would have been um, a hook and a shank. This is going to be a triple. It's going to come in at about six and a half to seven inches long. And we're fishing this for northern pike. Okay, there's my yellow. I'm going to pull all this junk stuff off the bottom. Now, our last collar was a, was a quarter inch. We want this one to be a little bit longer, so we're going to go a half inch. So I use my finger a lot. And basically a half inch is from the tip to the center of your finger. So I'm going to place the bottom of the feather right there in the center of my finger. And this is what I use to separate the material. And it does, I mean, it doesn't have to be per, you don't got to get out a pair of micrometers and check it. But you, you definitely want to make a conscious effort to build more bulk in your pattern as you move up going to make it swim better it's going to help with your taper it's going to look a lot better too the best one of these I ever tied it was in a color we call sweet potato pie and it was black and orange and two years ago we were at the Edison show and I had a bunch of them sitting on the table just as display and I left to do a presentation and I came back and it, there were like I don't know eight or ten of them that were gone and I'm like, where? Did, I wasn't planning on selling them. I just had them out there for a display. And I asked Tyler, I'm like, where did all the snot rockets go? And he's like, oh, I sold them all. And I'm like, they, they weren't really for sale, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, you spend every show saying you'll sell everything including I will. me. So it's, it's the guy started throwing $100 bills on the table to buy all of them. And it's I not let a, him have them. It's not a museum. <laughs> Tell me I got to sell to eat dinner. Well, I eat dinner that night. Zeno Park Mench, son. All right. Have you tried steaming your marabou to fluff it? No. We have a steamer. No, I have not. Okay. All right. So now I've got my I've got my yellow and my pink prepped, and I'm going to lay them right on top of each other, even them up a bit. Get off of there get off and I'm going to tie these in like so and I'm going to tie them in right in front of the uh, support ball that I made tie in a little bit big doesn't matter because you're not going to see it when it's all together but it just it bugs me okay. and we have some trivia questions coming up here I'll get to one here shortly we're giving away the March Madness t-shirt get out of there there we go okay now I'm going to grab both of these stems at the same time pliers get a hold of them and then I don't need this here so I'm just gonna clip that off okay and then I'm gonna just kind of stroke these back you want to be careful if uh, until you get a couple of wraps on this thing that tie-in point can be a little bit delicate and if you're not careful you can um, pull it out so just take your time, wrap it back, stroke it back each one, 
if you need to regrip the um, the stems so that you're pulling them both at about the same the same force or tension oh, just hit the camera okay and just keep working it back take your time this is not you're not really losing a bunch of these patterns you're typically we're fishing them I think we were fishing 30 pound um, fluoro with a uh, with a 30 pound bite tippet on it uh, wire tippet on it so you know if you and, and especially if you're in a boat if you hang them in a log you, you're just going to go over and get them I mean it's it's rare that you that you lose these flies I'm not saying that you don't ever but this is this is a fly that's worth a little effort to uh, to try to get back should you hang one in a tree or in a log on the bottom which I never do so no never never all right there we go so now I'm going to take this finger I'm going to pinch these stems right to the hook so they don't unwind bring my bobbin off my cradle and I'm going to come underneath one Two, three, and then in front. One, two, three. Underneath. Do that twice to make sure I got them captured. All right, and we're good. And I'll come in here with my fine point scissors, and I'll just clip these stems right off. So now, this is our marabou. This is our stem. So this is the vulnerable part here. So just like I did last time, I'm going to pick this out in case I have anything that's um, that's trapped in there, which I don't. And then I will take my brush and I will brush it because once you once you wrap back on them and you set them, if there's a mat or or if they're twisted or anything like that, it's going to stay that way. So there's one right there that was matted. Let me get that out. Okay, now what I want to do, I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to pull these back. Now, you can kind of see that that support, that dubbing ball is right there. So what I want to do, I want to wrap my thread back tight, right up against the front of that support ball. And what that's going to do, it's going to lay the fibers down and it's going to, it's going to flare them to the size of the support ball. There you go. Boom. See how that works, and then you get that nice 360 degree veil all around, and you just you keep doing this. And by the time we get done, we're going to have a killer taper on a killer looking fly. All right. So I'm going to put just a little get my bobbin out of there. I'm going to put a little dab of glue on here because these are for toothy critters. Okay, and I'm going to hold this back without getting glue on my fingers. And we're just going to put a couple layers of thread right over top of those stems. And believe it or not, when tying this way, these things are very, very durable. And they move like crazy in the water. Alright, so since we've got, what, three? Three trivia questions, okay. Let's finish that first one. Let's do something because it's quiet and I'm falling asleep over here. People You're falling asleep? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so we've got three trivia questions. We're giving away the Norvice March Madness t-shirt. You can see it. There you go. Um, you doing the big camera? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so there's the t-shirt. There's the back. There's the front. Okay. Um, and also, as a side note, while supplies last... If you go to the Norvice website, if you do a purchase of over $150, we're going to give you a free Norvice March Madness t-shirt. And that will continue until we are out of them. Yeah, All right. So if you get one and you put your size in the comments and it shows up and there's not a t-shirt in it, that means that we're out of t-shirts. We're out of that particular size. There's a, It says note to seller, um, if you buy over $150, Put your t-shirt size in there, and we will send you a Norvice t-shirt. Um, so tonight, we're talking about pike flies and, and um, toothy critters and so forth. And I will tell you this. These are not 
easily Googled answers. So you guys are going to have to work for these tonight. Um, how many species are in the genus Esox? Okay, so Esox are the, the type of fish, the, the genus Esox are the type of fish. How many different species does that genus um, comprise of? All right, so we've got our collar in, and here's my flash. And we're going to tie the flash in. A couple of good wraps on there, throw a half hitch. And remember, every collar will get three wraps of this stuff. You don't want to go crazy with it. It, for being kind of understated and not like, you know, a, a lot of crazy flash and flashy boom stuff like that it really does add to the pattern and we're just going to put three quick three quick wraps on there now I'm going to separate what stays on the brush and what stays on the fly like so and we're going to come in here and we're going to fish it through behind three behind Three in front. Remember, it's a wire core brush, so I'm going to come in here with my side cutters. And we're going to cut that off flush. And we're going to. F what? Oh, you, you're on the wrong camera? Okay. Okay. And we'll put it. I kind of took that, that end and kind of mashed it down with my, uh, with my thumb. And then we'll put a couple more wraps on top. And we're at the end of that one. Where's my whip finisher? There's one of them. Where's the one I want? Two, two three turn whips. Cut that off. Now I'll come in here with my bodkin and just just loosen up that that flash. It look when when you wrap it when you first wrap it you're like oh my god it's matting up over it just pick it out and and it 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 opens right up and it veils right back over that material. All right, so now I'm going to come in here with some Solares bone dry and I'm just going to coat this right there. And we're going to hit it with the torch. And there you go. Okay, so there's our tail section. Now the last thing that we have to do is come in here and we're going to cut this hook off. We learned last year, do not like double hooked flies for pike, or I guess it was two years ago. I actually had a bunch of tandems and uh, we wound up the ones we were fishing with we cut the back point off of the hook. Okay, and then we can, I'll just hold this with my bodkin, and I can brush this out. Okay, and then as you can see, we've already, our taper, you can see our taper's already starting. Okay, you can see it. And then if you look at it from the front, Kind of holding it so I'm, I'm crushing it but you can see we've got a 360 degree we've got like a 3d fly so whichever angle the fish looks at it it's going to see bulk and it's going to see um you know something that's that's worthwhile for it to go get which when you're chasing predator fish is important because especially the big ones they're constantly weighing you know is it worth is, is that meal worth me go, what, what I'm, the energy I'm going to have to expend to go and get it? And we want to make it so that, yes, it's definitely worth it. All right. 210 uh, Gamagatsu B10S size 2 watt. So we did get a winning answer. I let it go for a little bit. Okay. Uh, so the answer is seven. Seven. That is correct. So Three some species of pickerel. Couple, actually, I think four. Two pike. 
No, there, there was sorry, more three pike. Three pike. Yeah, there's exactly. Northern, Southern, and the Amur, which is in Russia. Yep. Now, don't say too much because there's two more questions. All right, for the connection, this is what we call a non load bearing connection. There's no hook on here. So, this is just 20 pound mono. If if there was a hook back there, and this would be, you know, in theory, if this could have a fish on it, you know, pulling, I, I would not use mono. I would use a, um, on this fly, I would probably use like a 30 pound um, wire. But th there's no, there's absolutely no load on this, so we can get away with using the mono. So I just put the mono in and I've doubled it over, wrapped my thread back, and actually I need to come back a little more. And this is what I like about this B10S. Number one, it's got, it's a stinger hook, so it's got an up point. So the point is, is pointing up towards the uh, barb. You get a fish hook, it's a bit harder for them to spit this hook. And the, the bend design lends itself really well to doing articulated stuff. It's got like, a, I call it a double drop bend, so... You, you can tuck this right up right up against the back of the hook like so and it, and it typically doesn't foul you could put a bead on here on this particular pattern I don't um, but I just I, I like I like this hook I I, I like the A-Rex the, um, the TP610 it's a great hook I use it for some of my stuff but I keep going back to this B10S So again, because this is non-load bearing, we don't have to go through the eye of the hook or, or anything like that. I will glue it just just for the sake of, of durability. But it's not like this is going to be, you know, you're not going to be pulling on it while it's hung in a tree or anything like that. And we'll just spin the vise and lay some thread down. So now, remember our three-quarter inch rule. So this is where our last collar ended. So the joint counts as part of the distance, right? So we want to go three-quarters of an inch from this collar to where our next one is. So if I lay my finger up against it, it's going to be about right here. That's where our next collar is going to be. And then our next one is going to be pretty much right at the front of this um, of this uh, hook. So we've got two, three, four, and then we're going to have a big one on the shank that's going to be about in the middle of the shank. So I'm going to wrap my thread up here to my spot. Go on the cradle. Now we're going to do a dubbing ball just like we did before. It's going to be a little bigger. So as we move forward, the dubbing balls get a little bigger and we get a little more material. Now, how do you judge the distance or, or the size of your dubbing balls? Again, it's you, you've got this thread here that goes from the front of your, um, your your hook to the thread post. So on the first one, I went about a third of the way. This one, I'm going to go maybe halfway. The next one, I'll go two-thirds, and the last one, I may go all the way. So again, it's another way of using the vise as a system to determine um, measurements and, and, and how big you're going to make things. It was being a bit of a pain. Come on, get on. There we go. Sometimes that ice dub and that Viva thread just don't want to grab. There we go. That looks good. This has absolutely no aesthetic value to the pattern. All this does is prop that marabou up. And let's see here. I need a little bit more. I can tell you that's not going to be enough. Let me put just a little more on here. You got to tie a bunch of these and kind of get a feel for it. I I know for a while I, this was the only pattern that I tied for a very very long time. off the cradle and we'll just add a little more bulk to that dubbing ball. Bada
on, boom, there you go. Come in here, wrap that thread back a little bit, and there you go. You won't even see it when the pattern's done. You won't see anything on the underside of the hook. Um, but it is, it's very, very important that it is there. So I've got my pink feather. And we'll strip that down. And now we did a quarter, we did a half, now we're going to do three quarters on this one. that off. There's my prepped pink feather. And let's see what we got here. That's a good looking yellow feather. top of one another. wind up throwing these uh, I lose a whole bunch of these hack this type of hackle plier every year because I throw them in my uh, the waste my waste basket and then I throw them out okay so we're gonna just kind of help these fibers back a little bit to get started and we're gonna start wrapping it I love how that marabou when you wrap them both at the same time how they kind of blend together and you get a kind of a mottled color effect of the, the two colors that you're doing. There you go. Take your time on this step. Stroke all the fibers back. Make sure you got nothing trapped. If you do have something trapped, go back and get it out. I can see if you look if you can see it right there see that like there's a wad of yellow in there that's some fibers that are trapped and then you just come in with your bodkin and pick it out if you keep wrapping you're going to have that wad of yellow in your pattern though forever especially if you wrap back against the dubbing ball and you trap that underneath it so you just keep stroking it back and keep wrapping forward and if you see anywhere where it's matted up Go in here nice and easy and pull it out. Okay, let me move these out to the end just a little further. So I either must be doing a really good job or there's nobody watching. Well, we got 38 people. That's it? <laughs> that sucks. It's a newly jacked up Facebook algorithm, yeah. algorithm and a Saturday in I mean a Sunday yeah. so. Alright, so I'm going to pinch that with my finger to hold them. I'm going to come back in with my thread. One, two, three. And we'll put three in front. And we'll get, get off of there. Uh oh. Is 
it off. I just knocked it. I don't know if it's off or not. And the little light isn't on anymore either. It's on. Okay. Well, I didn't. It wasn't like I said, hey, I want to hit this camera. All right. Now we're going to come in here. Cut these stems off. And we'll just come around with the bodkin and we'll kind of unmat all this stuff. And we'll come in with the brush. Brush it back. Super, super cool how this stuff works. Like I said, these were designed for chain pickerel. We've caught um, pickerel. We've caught uh, pike on them. Um, there's a guy in one of the New Jersey clubs. I taught this. They, they booked me for an articulated class, and I taught this. And It's like the only pattern the guy fishes now for bass. So now when I pull these back, you can see that support ball is right here. So I want to wrap back. And I want to get these these marabou fibers right up against that support ball. So, did you switch to putting the yellow one in front when they wrapped on purpose, or was it just kind of how you threw it up? There? It, it doesn't matter. I, I I used to like really worry about, you know, which which one went on top and which one went on the bottom. By the time it's done, there's so much pink and yellow in this thing. It it you you, you can't tell. Now, see how. See how the bigger the bigger dubbing ball has this thing coming off of the the shank at a steeper angle, and if we keep doing this, it's going to keep um, it's going to keep changing our um, or increasing, I should say, our uh, taper. There you go, nice, 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 nice. Okay, a little dab of glue. Get my bobbin out of the way. Tyler keeps having to walk out of the room because he's blowing his nose. You can probably hear him in the other room. Trying, it sounds like a foghorn going off. Allergies are bad. Pollen will be bad here today. You know, one thing I didn't have to deal with yesterday. What's that? that? Because all it is is marsh bud. Yeah. You're down there. All right. So here's our little Enrico brush that we're using for flash. And we'll tie it in right here. A couple of good tight wraps on it. Throw a half hitch. And then we'll go one. And you want to lay these, you want to lay the wire part of the core. You want to put them right in front of each other. You don't want to wrap back over top of, of what's what's already there. All right, so now I'm going to separate what's staying on the brush and what's staying on the fly. And if you need to, you can reach in with your bodkin and it'll kind of help you separate that. And we'll come back in with our bobbin. And we'll do three behind. Three in front. It's a wire core brush, so you don't want to cut this with your scissors. You can come in here with these little side cutters. Whammo. And then very important, take that, that little end and push it down with your thumbnail. That you might as well be tying on a razor blade. Put a couple of wraps there. So is it durable with pickerel? Absolutely. I have these patterns that, that we've caught 50, 75 pickerel on the same fly. And will you lose some of the marabou? Yes, yes, you'll absolutely lose some of the marabou. But, you know, a new fly, there's so much marabou on it that you get a lot of fish out of it. And that's that's what this whole putting your stems up here and then wrapping the thread back over top, using the thread to protect the stems, using the wire core and the brush to protect the stems, and using the, um, the glue to protect the stems. The, these are, for marabou, they are extremely, extremely durable. I, I love, marabou is one of my favorite materials to tie with. It, it really is. And um, it gets a bad rap sometimes, I think, because, oh, it's not durable. Well, it may not be totally durable, but it makes for a great fly. Now, like I said, 
These were done for a specific reason. This thing casts like a wet sock. I, I'm going to tell you right now, casting this thing is horrific. But when it hits the water and it starts moving, nothing moves. You, you've got on this particular one, you've got two joints um, with with three straight uh, platforms. You've got all marabou. This thing is constantly, constantly moving in the water. Even if you're not stripping it, it's moving. And when you when you stop stripping it, it will kick sideways and it will stay there which when you're pike fishing is very very important i think the big the, the the bigger pike i believe they hit the fly on the paws probably 80 to 90 percent of the time the little guys will hit it when it's stripping they'll just flash out and um it's kind of cool because they're i mean they're they're aggressive they'll come out and they'll really annihilate the thing but the big the big boys and the big girls hit while it's while it's sitting still get off of there this so cow have you ever used polar chenille instead of uh, the Enrico brush for it uh, I have not I don't think it's long enough I have Enrico not brush is like it's a three inch brush so it's an inch and a half long I think the polar chenille is probably only like three quarters or an inch yeah I don't, I don't I don't know I'm gonna have a little bit of trouble here This collar is going to be a little close to my other one. I didn't quite get, to, I got the spacing a little bit off, but it, it'll be okay. Yeah, this this is one of those where I, I kind of, it, it took a little bit to get it to look the way that I wanted it. It was the collar spacing that, that really did it, and that three-quarter inch roll is, is very important because if not, you'll get that, that real heavy collar and then a bunch of dead space, and then you'll get another real heavy collar and then a bunch of dead space and if you do it this way you, you get that nice flow from tail to head of um, of a nice um, you know your nice taper and um, and your nice bulk that that is consistent through the body of the fly and and I used to do um, I tried to match the the, the flash color to like one of the colors of the the marabou so for instance I, I i would on this one i may use pink or yellow flash and one day i was i was out of uh a, a, a certain flash color i don't remember which one it was and i said well let me just use the pearl and the the pearl kind of it takes on the color of the materials around it so now it doesn't matter what it, it can be black and I use the the pearl um, the pearl flash uh, brush, and and the pearl brush is a little bit finer than the, the actual material is a little bit finer than some of the other stuff. Uh, what weight rod will you use this on? This this triple here, um, I would definitely I would throw this on a ten, um, and that that new the uh, the BF big fly rod from TFO handled these things with no problem and I, I can ca I could cast it all day and I didn't feel like I needed to put my arm in a sling at the end of the day and that's the thing about pike fishing you're casting all day yeah it's pretty accurate for the first couple hours the last couple oh yeah hours, yeah oh no the I, first the, I could hit a dinner plate 60 the feet first with a nine inch fly and the first I'd couple hours yeah the first couple hours you can cast through a keyhole after lunch, you're lucky to hit a um, a, a, a freaking manhole cover. Yeah, right. It's um, it's uh, it's a tough gig, but it's fun, and the 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 takes are are so visual, and these fish are so so aggressive. And if you're interested, talk to my boys up at Steelhead Alley Outfitters. And if Tyler could post a link up there, that would be awesome. And they're running their warm water program. Um, well, for about another week. Right? Yeah, another. Well, I don't know if they're going to keep doing it when he goes to uh, when he goes to Alaska or not. But um, definitely, if you want to get in on this, give uh, give Patrick and the boys a shout. It's such a fun, fun, super cool fishery. And if you've never done it, oh my God, northern pike are so much fun. They're such a cool fish. I, I honestly, they, they are, 
I love small mouth. I love steelhead. They are very close to being my favorite fish. When you see a 35 inch fish shaped like a torpedo and that thing can turn on, it can turn its entire body 180 degrees faster than you can blink your eye. It is, it is unreal what these things can do. And they are just so much fun. I mean, who doesn't like angry fish that, uh, with teeth that like to eat flies and I know you know there's a lot of people you know musky 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 well yeah that, that's great I've never caught a musky um, but I know that there's a lot of people that go musky fishing and it takes them several trips to boat a fish they're, they're not called the fish of 10,000 casts for no reason we uh, first time we went northern pike fishing my goal was to boat one fish. We were fishing for two days. I said, if I get one fish in the boat, I will consider this trip a success. We started at 7 o'clock, and by 7.05, I had my first fish in the boat. And we just smoked them that day. So, they're not, you're not going to get a, you know, a fish as big as a muskie. But, you're going to get a big fish with the same attitude. This hook eye is fighting me. And it will not win. That's the beauty, one of the beauties of tying articulate flies. If you tie a crappy head, if it's in one of the center sections, nobody will ever see it. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, Jody Sharp. Oh, okay. I'll just wait till it's done. Because it is, it is pretty cool. And that's, that's another thing that I like about Marabou. The sky's the limit on your color combinations. And I, I've done, where, where I've wrapped the collars, where I've done triples, right? Three different colors. You can do it. Um, I, I don't... The, the effect isn't quite as as good I don't think you kind of lose one of the one of the colors in the in the translation so to speak but it, it can be done all right there we go now let me get this like I said don't worry about that head looking all crazy like that because you are not going to see it when we're done But I love how that, I, I, I like this yellow and pink. And I, I this weekend or this past weekend was the first time I had ever seen that. Now my dubbing ball is right there. Okay. So I'm going to wrap this back to right there. And don't worry about this. It looks, it looks bad. I know it looks bad. Just bear with me. Bit of glue on here. I think I went a little far on this. We'll see what we get when we when we're done here. I'm just gonna cover that up a little bit. Get those stems nice and covered up with thread. Okay, and now we'll put our flash in. If I can find our flash, here we go. So you're just, as with many big flies, you're just repeating the same step multiple times. Yeah, there's that hook point. Oh, this is Dee's favorite hook, isn't it? 
little bit smaller. Well, is it a, what was it, a one? Or a uh, one-aught? It's a size, it's supposed to be a size four. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. I, I didn't realize. Oh, it was the, the big one was the uh, the sculpting pattern that Braden did. Yes. Yeah. C.J. Morgan said, I caught a muskie without a rod. There was a perch on a chain, and he wouldn't let it go, so he brought him in the boat, took the perch out of the out of his mouth, and released it. The, I think a day or two before we were up, a, uh, a client with SAO had like a, like a small, like a, like a 10 or 15 inch, uh, pike on and he was stripping it in and a monster came out and smoked this thing and it had the little pike in his mouth and, um, they, they were trying to get it in, trying to see if they could get it in and land both of them cause the, the big one didn't have the, um, didn't have the hook in his mouth. And they, they didn't get it, but it was it was close. It was on for a while, they were saying. So, yeah, I just kind of screwed that up. I wrapped way too far back on that collar. That's all right. I think we can save it. Okay, now we've got, this is a inch and five-eighths, 40 millimeter, heavy-duty, um, Blaine Chocolate Articulated Shank from Flyman. Definitely did not make things easy on myself. There we go. Okay, so we'll take that off. Take this out of the vise, and then I'll give this a little brush here, and you can see what we're going to be working with. There you go. That's that's what we've got so far. I've got the collar spacing on that one. I wrapped it back a little too far here, but I'm going to make up for that um, on this this next step here. These heavy duty shanks, they have a um, like a, a double. Let me get another one out of here. They've got like a double open end on them, so they're open on on both sides, and you have to close you, when you when you get them in there. You've got to you've got to wrap up and close both sides. So, and now that it's closed, I got to reposition it. Okay. And then watch, watch that because those edges a lot of times are sharp. And then we'll just put a little glue on there. And I've got to reposition this thing again. Gonna put a fish mask on here. Alright, so the fish mask is going to go to about right there. Okay, so then we've got Yeah, I'm gonna do 
I'm going to do two. Usually I do two. I do one collar on the front, but beans I kind of messed that one up, and I and I got that one too far back. I think we're going to wind up putting two on here. So I'm going to go back right here. Okay, same thing. Half hitch, a little bit of ice dub. Spin the vise, touch the dubbing to the thread, and the dubbing will jump out of my finger here at some point. That's the problem with, I like Vivas, I, it, it's a twisted thread, which sometimes is not the best. It with, along with um, this ice dub, it's not the best for dubbing, but that's an easy fix. Just put a little wax on there, just to get her started. And bada bing, bada boom, there we go. Spread that out just a little bit. Pinch it tight. Again, no aesthetic value at all to this for the pattern. This is simply part of the design to get the materials to do what I want them to do. front of that ball okay and when soon as Tyler gets back in here we'll do trivia question number two I just said, as soon as Tyler gets back in here, we're going to do trivia question number two. All right, let's do it. All right, trivia question number two. We're talking again. We just talked about how many different uh, species there are in the genus Esox. Oh, man, one side's perfect and one side's all broomed <laughs> off. What's wrong with that? Hold on, let me, let me get this feather picked and then we'll do it. There we go. Okay, so... If you've been listening, I've actually answered this question about three times. So we've talked about how many um, how many species. The answer was seven. And next question is, you don't have to get super technical with it. Give me the three most popular ESOX species. And I've actually said all three of them tonight while I've been tying. In the United States. Okay, in the United States. We'll get a Russian guy that, that don't have certain things over there that yeah. have over here. And... Okay. Damn it. I used wax to get that dubbing started. Now I got wax on my fingers. It's messing with my my feather prep. All right, we got Todd Friedmeier said uh, American pe pike, American pickerel, chain pickerel, and muskie. So he he covered all three of them, even though yeah, we we, we were looking for. Um, and again, I said you didn't have to get super technical about this, but typically when you're talking about Esox, you're talking about Northern Pike, Chain Pickerel, and Muskie. So we will give that to, uh, to Todd. Okay. How many people live do we have? 33. 33. We're holding steady at 33. We used to get a couple 200, 300, 400. Now we're getting 33. Facebook's Thanks, Facebook. They don't want you to pay for it. Yeah, well. We're not paying for we're it. We pay enough. Okay. Boom. Right. 
summer, it says Britt. Yeah, it's, it is summer, I know, and it's... Our, I, know. I think when Britt got hurt like 700, it was last summer, wasn't it? Uh, I, I know when Grant got his, it was June. Yeah, I, I honestly, I don't remember when Britt got hers. But we were sharing then too, and that makes that makes a big difference. off come in here just get this kind of this stuff unmatted pick it out just a little bit give him a little hairbrush back This is a, it'll be a seven fish mask and it'll have a six millimeter eye on it. And there's my dubbing ball right there. That last one I went back way too far. Okay. Hit it with a little blue. Beautiful and badass at the same time. I like that. Okay, and now I'm going to have to pull out a new, new brush because I used all my other one. And I typically, when I pull a new one, I cut these in half for this because they're, they're, uh, when they're long like that, they're, they're tough to wrap. three wraps that's all the flash will put and you when when we get done and we get this thing all brushed out you will see there is plenty of flash in here but it's kind of it's underneath you know the collar so it's kind of like a like an internal flash kind of thing it, it, it looks super cool in the water it's it it gets you flash but it's not like crazy overstated it's not too overpowering Shank is wanting to move in his jaw something fierce. Okay. Come in here with the wire cutters, clip that off. And we'll come in with our bodkin. Poke this out. Give him a little brush. Alright, one more collar and then we're done. Seven inches. But when we get done, this one will be about seven inches. Yep. And we're going to come right up to here. And I knew that was going to happen. Get these back in here. With this much effort and materials, I'd be afraid to lose it. Well, you we don't. We fish them out of a boat. So if 
you hang it up in something, you can go get it, and you're fishing it on such heavy uh, line that if it's in a tree or something like that, it's going to be pretty hard to break it off. Yeah. Just don't launch it 20 feet up a tree, and you'll be fine. Yeah, trust me, with this much effort, uh, we don't want to lose them either. There we go. There we go. You should get them. Okay. All right, then we're going to come right in here. We're going to put our last collar right here. Yes, it is a, it is a 40 millimeter, 40 millimeter inch and five eighths chocolates, big game shank. This ice dub and this Vivas thread do not want to work together. There we go. Does not play well with others. Okay, tighten that up. off the cradle again zero aesthetic value it has nothing to do with the appearance of the fly this is 100 percent functional and don't worry that the underside if it starts to look a little gnarly because you're not going to see any of it when we're done okay uh feather really should have pre-sorted these feathers beforehand. There's a good one. Ew. There's a good one. And this is going to be our heaviest collar as far as the amount of material we're going to go with about an inch and a quarter <laughs> the air conditioner just came on and it's it's blowing feathers <laughs> all over the place it was hot today people I saw I think it was Brittany put something up, hurt the temperature, like put a picture up of her, like her Apple CarPlay, and the temperature was like 108 degrees. I was like, man, I, I didn't, seriously didn't think Idaho got hot like that. Uh, what brush is that again? It's a, it's an EP Enrico Puglisi Sparkle, Sparkle Brush. There it is right there. And again, three wraps of that. You don't need a lot. And when I get done here, you're going to see there's plenty, plenty of flash in here. Who is on next week? Do you know? I have no idea. Obviously, you don't. <laughs> I don't. I can look at my phone. Um... But off the top of my head, I do not. I know it's not Braden because he was just on last week, right? Yeah. No, Ben. Ben Cleveland was on last week. He did the um, the the uh, Atlantic salmon flies, which was cool. I finally did watch it because we were up on the Pike trip, and I I, I couldn't um, I couldn't be on while he was tying, and I yeah. watched it the other day. It it was good. Braden was the week before. Oh, thanks, Dallas. What? They heard me sneeze, and Dallas typed in, "God bless you." He's watching. Oh, yeah? Uh, I told him, I'm like, you may want to watch what my dad's doing because you can use the marabou technique to tie some pretty cool bucktails. You can. You absolutely can. This is limited only to your imagination. And there are... Sweet-looking fly, but takes almost as long to tie as a game-changer. You're right. It does. Materials cost about 20% of a game-changer. Yeah, it, it does take as long to tie as a game-changer, but... Um, what seven inch fly doesn't take a long time to tie? Is that 
or bore connection. No, uh-uh, no. <laughs> I mean, it's just if, if you're tying, you know, I, I have a, a, a rule as far as, as fly tying goes. And, you know, as, as far as personal flies or flies that I will fish with or flies that I will guide with. And, you know, for me, it's, you know, a fly should take no longer. If it takes more than 10 minutes to tie, it, it's not, it, it's too complicated. And, and I, I believe that, and I, I still believe that even as I sit here and I tie this pattern. But what you have to remember is we've tied basically three flies and, and chained them all together. So, you know. I mean, we'll fish that fly for 20 or 30 trips before they at can least, make it retired. At, at, at least. At least. At least. So you got to look at the time you're putting in the fly yeah. versus the time you're getting back out of it. A trout nymph where you're going to lose them over and over and over again. Yeah, a trout nymph, the average life of a, of a trout nymph is about 10 minutes if you're fishing them right. I think when we since we've been fishing snot rockets, I've broken off one. Yeah, and, and we tie this version, we tie the junior one, which I've done on here, which is basically just um, two collars. And I've lost a fair amount of that. Yeah, and, and they're, they're a great fly as well, but... You know, you got to look in, you got to look at, you know, what you're, what you're doing here. You're not going to tie seven inch long, you know, flies for big toothy predators and reinforce them the way that they need to and do all that, you know, with a quick, you know, 10 or 15 minute tie. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Actually, it's your a single collar. The front will be perfect for the little teasers. For yeah, teasers. and, and we do the, um, I do a tube fly. And a, uh, a what you call it, a, a, a steelhead swing fly, which is just one collar in the front. And, and they, you know, they take, but they're only, you know, two and a half inches long. They're not, they're yeah, not they're seven long. inches long. So, yeah, no, it, it does take as long to tie as a, uh, as a uh, game changer. And, and, you know, to be quite honest with you, there's a lot of game changer inspiration in this pattern. And the reason that I don't tie game changers and I don't, I don't really fish them that much is because it's not my pattern. All right. Now, isn't that cool how that pink and that, that yellow marabou just kind of, just kind of blend together. I just, I, I love the way that looks. And, and I will say this fly does not have that that snaking back side by side action or side to side action of the game changer. It will move in the water, but the biggest thing is it it continually moves even when you're not stripping it because the marabou is always moving around, and it will kick sideways when you stop stripping it, which for Esox is very, very important. And you don't have to do you don't have to do these with marabou. I've done them. Enrico makes a craft fur brush that I've done them with that that, that works. Um, I just I like the marabou. Stop that. I just really that thing's going to pop out of there again. I screwed up and I rushed the eye on the on the hook and now I can't get the bite on the shank that I need to get to get it down in the jaw properly. Using the shank jaw. Now I'm using the big jaws. That pointed tip may get up it it might, I know. Just don't want to well, it's I'm kinda I'm 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 in the middle here. I'm kinda dancing with who brought me at this point. So I gotta get it. All I got to do is get the, it was my fault too, it kind of, kind of screwed up the whole thing. But, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. That's why I didn't want to do it. I just, I may have just lost that whole front collar. No? Okay, good. Alright, there we go. And now we'll wrap this.
this back to the dubbing ball, which is right there. Give it a little brush out. Okay, now for the, we're going to put a mask on here, but I'm also going to put a collar of this, um, this, we used it the last time, American Tide Flies. It's kind of like um, Laser Dub, but it's a bit longer. So we've got a pink and, and yellow fly, so I'm going to put... I'm going to put yellow on the bottom and pink on the top. Let me come back just a little bit on that. Okay, there we go. So let's, uh, let's throw a half hitch just to be sure. I'm going to start on the bottom and we'll get some yellow out here. Where's the yellow? There it is. All right, last trivia question. While well, I'm finishing this baby off, We're talking a lot about Northern Pike tonight because that's the trip that we just came back from. Where or how, what is the Northern Pike named after? It's named after a specific item. What is that item? Okay, so we've got a little bundle of this. We're going to, I teased it out. We're going to tie it on in the middle. Okay, and we're going to come around to the top. And we're going to get some of the pink. Oh, there it is, right there. Jody Sharp got it. He said a war weapon. There you, there you go. It is technically you can read it because that that was the definition. That's right there. It's a it's a, a it's a popular weapon used in combat, which consists of a pole with a metal insertment on top. There you go. Man, that was quick. I thought that would take some time. All right, so we've got our yellow on the bottom. We're going to put our pink on top. And we're just pulling this from the middle and then putting it back together, and that kind of aligns the fibers up. Lay it right on the top. Two, fold the, fold the pink back. Fold the yellow back. Now that I've got them both going back, just wrap back here a little bit. And we're going to whip finish that off. Put the head on, and we are almost done. that off now just like we did with the um, with the hovercraft I'm just going to kind of pick this stuff out and do a top and bottom kind of give it a double mohawk there and then we'll just take the brush and we'll veil this back and this again this is all part of building bulk up in the front when you're working with articulated flies, you want a lot of bulk in the front, not as much bulk in the back, and that's what helps them swim. And we're going to take our size 7 fish mask, and we're going to push it on. Okay. And I'm going to build up a little thread dam there in front. This does really is hold the fish mask on. That's good. Get a couple quick three turn whip finishes. That thing is setting me in a fit. Go. 
Okay, we're going to finish her off with a couple of eyes. I've got the six millimeter, what they call the dragon eyes. I think these will look really cool with that that pink and uh, and yellow um, color scheme that we've been working with. And we'll do a little Loctite gel. Just put a little dab in the middle. And I'll use my bodkin. Bend that bad boy around. Spin him around, a little dab of glue. I like that super, that Loctite with that push button applicator on. It's really good for going eyes and stuff like that. That will be a nice flounder teaser. I need to tie that up for next trip. Who said that? Dallas. Oh. <laughs> Well, hold on. You haven't seen it when it's out of the vise and all brushed out. And it's a shame he doesn't know somebody that happens to own a fly vise company. Yeah, yeah. He could tie that on the new door vise of his. Yeah, he could. <laughs> all right. So now I want a little bit of bone dry for the thread wraps here in front. Now, what should I what, what should I do with those eye sockets? As far as solar is, uh, I would just go and I mean, I do use solar as on the whole thing, but I would go with the solar. Uh, the thin's not out there, it's in the bin. I'd put bone dry over top of the over eyes. Over top of the eyes? Thing and just let it okay. create a shell and hold it all on. Alright, easy enough to do. It's, I will never use head cement again. No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I will either. I think we've got a couple. Got a couple extra jars of that too. Yeah, just put a just put a dab right there in the middle. And just spread it around. On just gonna kind of fill that whole eye socket up. And boom. Okay, and then we'll spin him around. It's funny, I had never seen this color combination. Pink and yellow, and Patrick tied that fly on Ed's uh, rod the first morning, and we fished it. And I kept watching that in the water, and I'm like, man, that looks good. I said, if I was a fish, I'd eat it. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. We are all done. Let me pull this bad boy out of here, and let me brush it out. Where is my brush? There it is. Go back to the to the big camera. Flash through the pike pictures again real quick while you're doing that. Yeah, you can. Yep. Alright. So this is what that fly is in. Uh, and there you go. It's got more pink than I thought. It's it's more pink and less yellow, and that's probably because I was putting the pink on top. If you put the yellow on top and you wrapped all the collars, it would look more yellow than it would pink. Mm -hmm. But you can see we've got a nice taper. There's no dead spots even in there, even though I screwed up the one collar and I put it on too far. You can see we've got a nice triangle taper all the way back to the back of the fly. Also, if you look at it from the front, which is kind of tough because it's going to want to move, you can see it's got it, it's got 360 degree. Maybe I can show it from the back a little better. It's round. It's round, right? So you, anything that the fish sees anywhere he looks at it, he's going to see the same thing, and it moves like crazy in the water. So this is this is one of my signature patterns. It's called O'Neill Snot Rocket. Now this is the. You're asking, is that a toothbrush? Yeah, it's a toothbrush. Yeah, it's a toothbrush. It's yep, that's that's all it is. Toothbrush is great for brushing this stuff out. It doesn't tear anything out nope. when you do it. 
No, it's just a Colgate. I probably got it in my little little pack when you go to the dentist and they give you your little free toothbrush and, and dental floss and all that crap. Um, yeah, I, I use that all the time. I read for, so he did the demo tonight and it took an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, actually tying the fly, if you're like in the mood, you got your feathers pre-prepped, take about 40, 45 minutes. 45 minutes, yeah. Yep. Your first one will take you over an hour. Your second one will take you 45 minutes. Yeah, the biggest thing is, is getting the right marabou and getting it prepped properly. Um, and then remembering to, as you're moving forward, keep that three quarter inch roll. Like I said, even though I screwed up on that one collar, I kind of fixed it so you can't really see it. Um, but keep the three quarter inch roll and then you start at the tail. Remember I said, you know, when I first did the tail, you're like, oh, it doesn't look like there's a lot of material on it. Well, look at it now because all of this stuff kind of, kind of veils back over top of each other. So there is absolutely plenty of material on that fly. Dallas goes, is that Tyler's toothbrush? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the original. This is the, the, the platform of, of the original one that, that, that we came out with about four years ago, three years ago, I guess. We've been playing around. Um, we've been doing some saddles off of the back as opposed to the, um, to the marabou. We've done a couple with spun deer hair heads, which, which work really well because the deer hair plows through the water and it makes it makes the tail of the fly kick um i totally totally spaced on this but rattles and this is a cool new rattle that that we've kind of found in the in the gear realm of things it's got this little keeper on it so you can slide it over top of the hook or the shank or whatever i know i this week so they'd be here in time and you completely i totally this. forgot to put it on yep so you take these things, and they make a double barrel one too, which has two rattles. But you you just slide this this uh, thing over top of the shank, and then you build a thread dam in the front and the back, and the rattle will stay there. And the cool thing is, if the rattle breaks, you can take it out of this rubber thing, like so, and put a new one in, uh, which is kind of cool because a lot of times when you tie rattles in and they break, you're just you're just kind of screwed. You have to uh, you have to fish to fly without a rattle. But they're from uh, this company it's called buckshot rattle and they make a bunch of different stuff um and it's it's towards the the bass the the gear world of the bass but the, the they work well for um for us in the fly world so there you go that's o'neill snot rocket that's going to come in at about six and a half inches it's going to cast like a wet sock you're going to need a a, a nine or a, or a ten to throw it but in the water this thing moves like crazy and by design the hook is right in the middle of the pattern there. I'm holding on to the hook point. Reason being, how do Esox eat their pattern? They T-bone them. So they're going to come from the side, and they're going to eat it right in the middle. And if they do that, they've got a whole lot of B10S in there waiting for them. So there you go, guys. Any questions, let us know. We'll hang out here for a little bit. I think we've got to all the questions. Um... And let me see who's on next week. I got so many notes in here. Oh, I haven't opened this one up in a while. It's down. What about using a dragon tail on it? Yeah, absolutely. So I like the mini dragon tails just because I think the regular dragon tail is just too much. But yeah, you can use one on there. What size hook was the B10S? That was it's a, a two watt. If you don't have the B10S, you can use a TP610. They're not too different as far as length goes for tying the fly. Yeah, they're they're a little bit. The TP610 so is a it's long. a little bit longer. Um, yeah, we go Facebook Live Info. Oh, she's got, okay, I missed uh, the winners from last week uh, for Ben Cleveland, so we, we'll ship that stuff out this week. Uh, okay, Facebook Live schedule, here we go. It's June 6th. Uh-oh. June 13th is blank. <laughs> it's maybe you again. It may be, or if any of our team members or ambassadors want to step up, 
shoot myself a message or shoot Casey a message and um, call it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, yes, it is a two aught Gamagatsu B10S. Here, I'll show you. The, I'll show you the pack of hooks. There you go. Two aught Gamagatsu B10S stinger hook. Great, great hook. All right, so we don't know who's going to be on next week, but we will certainly figure it out. I am digging that orange and yellow. That is, or that pink and yellow. Look at that. That is cool, dude. I like that a lot. Yeah. That's the first one of those in that color I've tied. That's a cool looking fly. All right, guys, we're going to sign off. Uh, have a good week. If you need anything, give us a shout. Remember, anything over 150 bucks, put your shirt size on, and you're going to get one of these Norvice T-shirts, the March Madness shirt, while supplies last. And uh, watch the Facebook and the Instagram. And as soon as we know who and what they're tying next week, we will definitely put it up there. So, thanks, guys. Have a great weekend.